What up, y'all? This is your boy, Sheriff Speaks, man. Before I get anything started, make sure you guys pound the like button, pound the subscribe button, and also pound the like and subscribe buttons to my boys, Miller Boy Gaming and Heems Gaming. They do gaming, they do live streaming. You might even catch a boy up on there kicking some ass alongside them. Okay, question of the day today is, when did Captain America become worthy? It's a very great question with many couple with many answers tied to it, possibly. Now, I intended to have this question answered in my in-game review originally, but I decided, you know, I figured, I was like, you know what? At the last minute, I was like, you know what? I can put this as a separate video, and here it is today. I thought I figured today was the day for that. Okay, here's how I believe. This is here's how I believe. You know, Captain America became worthy of Milner. If we all remember from the very beginning of Steve Rogers' arc and Captain America was the first Avenger, Steve Rogers, even before he even had the Super Soldier Serum, made very noble pure-hearted decisions uh for example when he was during basic training when Tommy Lee Jones threw that grenade on the ground while the rest of the company threw I mean ran for cover Steve Rogers was the only one to jump on the grenade as skinny as he was was the only one to actually do something like that you know and secondly let's let's not just forget about this either he took on Hydra twice at that you know of course during the first adventure he won uh no, the second time during the Captain America, the Winter Soldier, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a third option is we all know the infamous now scene in Age of Ultron when the, all the Avengers are trying to lift Mjolnir. Steve Rogers is the, is the only one to make Mjolnir move, and which made N Thor shook as hell. You know, another reason is during the Age of Ultron press run, when Joss Whedon was questioned by a fan, he says, why isn't Steve Rogers considered worthy? And Josh Whedon goes, is he not worthy? Can he not lift Mjolnir? Has, or has he not tried? It's under that variation. And that makes me think, when you look back and you analyze that scene where Steve is trying to lift Mjolnir, it moves a little bit. It makes Thor very nervous. Why? Because he can, because Steve potentially has, has you know, the, the requirements to actually lift Mjolnir and possess Mjolnir and be worthy of him. And in Endgame, and I apologize for this spoiler for those that haven't seen it, in the final battle against Thanos in the Black Order, we see after Thor's getting, being, being, getting his ass kicked by Thanos, Mjolnir is summoned by none other than Captain America himself, and he proceeds to kick Thanos' ass with Mjolnir. And we hear Thor say, I knew it! Because during Age of Ultron, Thor knew that Steve could lift Mjolnir. And possibly Steve may probably knew too, which is why he gave up. He was like, you know what? He was like, no, I'm not even going to lift it. Because maybe Steve was actually not even trying with all his strength to lift Mjolnir. For him to move it just a little bit, come on. You mean to tell me he wouldn't have been able to lift Mjolnir? Come on. And that's pretty much what Josh Whedon was going to get in that. Um, another example, I believe the fifth example would be during um, Infinity War. When, you know, he was leading up, he led the order against, you know, the Black Order at the fight of Wakanda. Again, previously in one of the scenes at Scotland when, you know, Praxima, I think Proxima Midnight and Cold Obsidian, not Cold Obsidian, but um, that other guy, um, they tried to jump <laughs> Scarlet Witch and Vision at, in Scotland. And he showed up and he defended it. He protected the people that he loved. He cared about his friends. Um, another thing, another example, number six would be when the, the Sokovian Accords was on, was at every other venture's lap. Um, few signed, and one of them having to be Steve Rogers. He stood firm in his values and his beliefs. And I believe that that's what made Mjolnir really believe up more than ever. Like, oh, you know what? This guy's worthy of me, man. He's definitely got it. He's, he's got the full package. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm just thinking. That's what I'm going to base this answer, my answer on. He's always remained pure-hearted. He's always stood firm in his values. He even confessed to, you know, Bucky, his best friend, whom he didn't, he, whom he wouldn't kill. And Captain America, the Civil, I mean, the Winter Soldier, you know, to killing, you know, Tony Stark's, his best friend, his parents. He confessed to that. And I feel like that in, at that turn of events, that culmination of the turn of events is what led to Milner being you know, worthy of Cap's wielding, wielding, Cap being worthy of wielding Mjolnir. You see what I'm saying? So all those things, his pure heartedness, standing by his values, protecting the people that he loves, all those things to me 
culminates and makes me conclude and comes to the conclusion and, and in closing is the reason why Captain America became worthy of Mjolnir. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you guys agree with me, pound the like button. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. This has been your boy Sherry Speaks. If you guys have your own theory as to why Captain America became worthy, let me know in the comment section below. I love the discussion. Peace and love.